Hey guys, uh, welcome to my next video. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a pre-canned data set and I'm going to just show a couple of basic ways you can start to sift through your data. Uh, we'll show how to create a sub data set that only has a chosen number of variables. And I will show how to remove observations that we are not interested in. So, uh, with that, there will also be some like if else command, some logic stuff, and yeah, should be pretty small, but it is uh, very necessary skills to get started in a lot of situations. So with no further ado, let's get started. We need to start by specifying our libraries. Uh, for a project like this, I don't actually have more than one library that I need. I'm just going to open up the Wooldridge library which I have mentioned, I mentioned this in my previous videos. Uh, this is a bunch of data sets that are used in one of the textbooks that I've used before. And once again, I'm going to use the wage pan data. Uh, so if I were to annotate this, I would say, here's a data set. One thing I'm gonna try to do here is, well, first let's just look at the wage pan data. Let's run this code first. By the way, you can either highlight it and hit run, or you can highlight it and hit control enter. Same result either way. I'm also going to, just for fun, view the wage pan data set. So we've got all this different stuff on here. And sometimes data sets will have tons of information that isn't relevant to your research question. And so one thing we're going to do here is we're going to figure out how to reduce a data set to something we want. And a simple way, you can get fancier if you want to, but a simple way to get started is what if we wanted to create a data set? Now let's call it a sub data set with year and with education and with log wage. Uh, these are three different variables that existed in our data set. So how do you go about this? Well, one thing we can do is create a new object in R. Now you can call it anything you want to. The important thing is to make sure that your name that you choose is a name that will not show up anywhere else in R's documentation. So I'm going to call this my YouTube data because I'm using it for this video. Uh, and YouTube data. I don't want to just set it equal to something because equals is more for logic operations. I'm going to assign it a value with this less than sign and the dash. And I need to piece together the year, the education, and the L wage. Let's do something. I'm going to make a common mistake here in a second. And let's see if you can catch it. So first, here's a function, cbind. It binds together columns. So I'm going to bind together my year column, my education column, my L wage column. Let's see how this goes. Error, object, year not found. Oh, yeah, this is going to haunt you a lot uh, when you're getting started. We need to tell R where to find this. So I'm going to say wage pan dollar sign. And it tells me that year is located in the wage pan data, and so is education, and so is L wage. Let's run that now and see what happens. Okay, we no error, so let's see what it looks like. View YouTube data. Look at that. We've got a bunch of years, a bunch of amounts of education, and a bunch of log wages. So one thing that might bother you when you look at this is that there's no names. Like I just said this is year education and log wage, but how would you ever know that? I mean, we know because that's what we set it equal to, but it'd be nice to label our data and make it obvious in the future. So I'm going to add column names and I'm going to do it with this command. I'm going to say call names, column names. The way this function works is you plug in a data object or a matrix. So we'll, in our case, it's YouTube data. And I'm going to assign this a value. I'm going to use the C command, which is a lot like C bind. And, and I'm going to give it values. I'm going to say year. 
and I'm going to say education. And I can put in whatever values I want here. Log wage. So let's run this command and see what happens. Let's view our YouTube data. Run the command in a second time because I want it to refresh. And look at that. Now our data set has cool labels and we know exactly what we're looking at. All right, so we are almost there. There was just one more little thing I wanted to show you guys, which is the possibility that some of this data isn't relevant to our question. So what if, for example, we were only interested in running our regression on people who have college education, which means we'd want to remove anyone with a 12 or less for education. How would I restrict my data set to this? I'm trying to take my YouTube data and I'm trying to change the education variable. And so I'm going to change that specific variable within it where I'm going to set it equal to, I'm going to do an if else statement. These are lovely. I love these little help boxes. I'm going to put a logical test in there a value if yes and a value if no. You can hit F1 if you need more demonstration, but it's going to look something like this. YouTube data, dollar sign, education. I want to do education. Uh, and for my test, I'm seeing if it's greater than 12. And if it is, I'm going to hit enter to go to the next line because I don't want to run off screen. YouTube data, dollar sign, education. Oops. So if they're college educated, leave them the way it is. And if they're not, hit NA. Now let's look at this. We're going to see there's actually a problem here. Because this is the way it seems like it should work. But then you get this operator is invalid for atomic vectors command uh, error message. And what that means is it's mad at us because when we're looking at this, we tried to give it a name and use the name, but it's still thinking of it as a vector or as a matrix. So instead of looking at YouTube data dollar sign education, we should be looking instead at the second column of YouTube data. This is a common mistake. I ran through it and ran you through right like you're going to see this error because you'll probably see it more than once. So instead of doing dollar sign education, I want a different way of getting my second column. So introduce the square brackets. Square brackets are for when you want to focus on a certain part of your data. In between them, you'll have a rows category and a columns category. And so for our rows, I'm just going to leave them blank because I want to do this to every row in the data. And for my columns, I'm going to focus on column two. Now, I'm so when I say YouTube data bracket comma two, that means I'm looking at the second column of YouTube data, which we know is the education column. And I'm going to change this be the same thing that shows up in my if else statement. Let's see if that changes our result. Hey, okay, there's no error term. That's a good sign. Now let's scroll through. Look at this where there would be 12s and 10s and stuff. It goes NA. So we've done it. We've created NA values where less just where the people who we were less interested in existed. And then what we can do is we can just remove the NAs. With the NA omit command. And what we will have when we're left is all the same information that we had for the people who qualify but for the 3,000 something who got dropped because they didn't have as much education, 
they're no longer in this data set. So there were a bunch of NAs and we just dropped them. So that is kind of a brief intro to ways to manipulate your data to get it in a usable form. I only showed you a couple of things. One of them was focusing on a certain list of variables. And the other one was dropping observations that don't help us answer a research question. Now, any kind of question you might have of, well, what should I drop or what's relevant? This video doesn't answer that question. Do your own research. But hopefully you got some of the coding tricks for doing those simple commands. All right, that's all I got. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy econing. Good luck. Study hard or whatever. See you later.